Mount McKinley, or Denali, on the Alaskan range, standing at 20,320 feet, is the highest mountain in North America. As Everest is to the Tibetans, Denali is inseparable from Alaskan lore. Every native who saw her towering over their horizon named it accordingly, the Great One, the High One. After flying onto the mountain from frontier town Talkeetna, climbers carry all their supplies to base camp, a hike of about nine miles. The climb usually takes 17 to 18 days round trip, with up to a week of this holed up in a tent, making this a very physically and mentally demanding ascent. This documentary follows the progress of six climbers from Great Britain and Ireland, with team leader Gavin Bate. So what we're trying to do at the moment is just make sure we've got our routines correct because it's a big mountain, it's, it's often very, uh, it's very violent with weather and you've got to know exactly what you're doing. So uh, before we move, we just want to make sure that everybody knows how to use the stoves, put tents up, um, rope management and so on. So uh, that's our plan and there's six people in the team. There's uh, myself, there's Steve Pinfield uh, who will also be uh, helping me out with uh, the, the guiding and the leading and so on. And uh, we've got Martin Barnett, he's from Croydon, and Richard Sheen, he's with us as well, he's working the camera today. And uh, we've got Dave Hunter and Joe Haslam from Dublin. But uh, we had a little bit of an accident today, uh, Joe cut himself quite badly, so he's had to fly off the mountain and uh, go to the hospital, and we're hoping to see him again tomorrow if he comes back to the mountains. So at the moment we're down to five, which is um, just one of those things. As other climbers set off, the team prepare for the journey ahead, anxiously awaiting news of their teammate, Joe Haslam. So have to be a bit careful of this in the tent. So we hung on here and we just heard this morning that uh, he's had seven stitches on his finger and um, he'll be coming back to join us in the, in the next hour or so. And what we want to do is uh, we just want to see how he is with using his finger because um, when you're up higher in very cold temperatures you need to use your finger for everything from putting a crampon on to cooking to putting tents up and so on. So we want to be entirely sure that he can do all that and uh, he doesn't end up at 14,000 feet splitting his finger wide open in which case one guy's got to come down with him and it splits the team and so on. So we're trying to really think ahead on that. So we've decided to hang on here at base camp for another day and um, see how it goes and then uh, we'll go up tomorrow morning. Press ups on one finger and one finger. Uh, so. Joe rejoins the team and it is decided he is fit enough to continue on the climb. In the morning the ascent will begin. Finally, the plane leaves the mountain, and the climbers set off to conquer Denali. When you're walking along, a couple of things you have to bear in mind are keeping the rope taut, keeping the same pace as the people, the person in front of you, so that you're all going at the same pace. There's nothing worse than being pulled backwards and forwards. And then you just sort of walk and your mind wanders and think about all sorts of things. 
and uh, I think about trips to come, I think about what's going on for the rest of the year. I know that after this I'll be going out to Africa to go on Kilimanjaro. Think about that. Think about lots of things. And you sort of go into this little world, this sort of dream world, and I guess each person has a different way of dealing with it, but uh, you just think. And I like that. I like it about being up here. I like the fact that you can just think. <laughs> Because a lot of time at home, you know, you're just too busy. Life gets in the way. <laughs> but up here, everything gets distilled down to just a few priorities. <clears throat> so, it's one of the reasons I love coming up on these expeditions. Time to think. <sighs> From base camp. There are five more camps to get to on the mountain. Two weeks lie between them and the summit. Okay, well this is this is our first view of the mountain. We've come round from the one of the forks of the Kiltner Glacier. So we've come onto the main glacier. And obviously there's the summit over there. And looking left along the ridge, that's gonna be our summit day walk uh, along that ridge. And if you drop down the ridge to that the point where it sort of levels out that's the sort of 17,000 foot camp. And then if you follow the ridge further along to where it goes down to like a little notch and you can see a little bit of snow coming right up to the ridge, that's the top of the head wall. So we're gonna be climbing that. Um, we're not gonna go right to the end of that ridge. We're gonna sort of come straight up that uh, snow bank, snow, um, snow gully up onto the ridge. So basically <laughs> we're gonna spend a couple of days in there and then we're gonna go up onto the ridge and that is the West Buttress. And then we're going to sort of follow it all the way around up to the summit. It's a few days away yet, but uh, it's nice to see it all in front of us now, nice and clear. It's a great day for it. It's really good. When necessary, the team will have to make double carries of gear between camps to ensure proper acclimatization and reduce loads to a manageable weight. At the moment, the team have decided to carry everything at once which can be a very tiring method of climbing. <sighs> so we've been going about three or four hours up the uh, Kiltner Glacier on our first day basically from base camp. <sighs> and uh, this is everybody's feeling a bit knackered, you know, with the, the weight of the sleds the heaviest weight really for the whole trip. They're all sort of you know, hauling, putting against your hips where the harnesses are. Just feeling the heat a bit, thighs burning and so on. And uh, we're just coming across now the, the bottom of what's known as Ski Hill and quite a lot of people camp here for the night. Only Gavin and Steve are experienced mountain climbers. For Martin, Richard, Dave and Joe, this mountain will be a real test of endurance and mental strength. You get there that well, but that'll do. Absolutely. Richard, tell us how you feel. Uh, my feet are sore, but that's usual for me. I got, uh, <laughs> but happy, very happy. It was a good day's walk. Tomorrow, the team will climb to Camp 2 at 10,000 feet altitude. Times like this when you wish you were just back at home in your bed, you just get up and go and have a hot shower. <laughs> Instead of which, you can't, you've got another day of hauling sleds ahead of you, which is the fun of being on Denali. So. It is. Today is the 21st of May, <laughs> 21st of May, and uh, it's my birthday, and uh, we're doing a real trip.
trog up past uh, Ski Hill from about 8,000 to 9,700 feet, something like that. And uh, a lot of people do a double carry here, but we've decided to take everything all in one and uh, just sort of put up with it. And it is hard. Well, we're halfway up Ski Hill. We think, well, about halfway up Ski Hill. We've just had lunch, had a bit of a rest, get some liquid on board, rest those tired thighs from all those like that, hauling up that hill. And uh, hopefully my sled's not going to fall over so many times on this section. <laughs> But you never know. <laughs> the team spent the night at Camp 2 and decide again to carry everything at once. Already, conditions are becoming more extreme on only the third day from base camp. Well, we're heading up. This is our sort of third consecutive day of uh, hauling. So uh, now we're, we're reaching Kiel, the pass here. We've, almost reached the top of the valley. And what we're going to do is we're going to swing around sharp right and camp at 11,000 feet. And every day the weather's just been getting a little bit more hazy, a little bit colder. When it's, it's, it's pretty much standard up here, sort of slightly more unsettled weather. But it's kind of nice because as you, you know, you're hauling a lot of weight still and uh, it's nice to have a bit of a cool breeze. And uh, you just got to keep yourself well watered and well fed and keep on the move. And it's good, we're doing really, really well. Anyway. Right. Oh. Well, here we are at uh, 11,000 feet at uh, the base of Motorcycle Hill, which is just behind me in the background there. It doesn't look much, I guess, but uh, when you're on it, it's, it's a bit of a killer, a bit of a slog. And in fact, today coming up from uh, sort of 9,700 up to here has been a bit of a slog as well. That's the way it is with this mountain, you just got to pull, pull a lot of weight up some pretty steep slopes. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of stay here tonight and then tomorrow we're going to do a carry up to uh, 13,500. Then we're going to come back down here and then the next day take the rest of the gear up. So, because uh, we're sick of carrying everything. <laughs> a lot of people do double carries, as in they take some stuff up, leave it in the place, then go back down again and then come up with the rest of the gear, double carrying. But we've actually take, done a single carry all the way so far, which is it's sort of hard at the time because you're carrying, you know, 100, 120 pounds each. But uh, at least you only have to do these hills once. Then most of these people are climbing the mountain twice. Which, <laughs> it's a bit much. So uh, while we're here, you know, this is a great place. A lot of people are hanging out here. People just getting ready. People just relaxing, coming in, doing a carry, camping, whatever. So uh, it's always interesting chatting to people and finding out what the crack is. And, and so on. So, uh, and you can always talk to people coming down as well, what the weather's like up there. It's a very sociable sort of situation here, uh, except when the weather comes in. <laughs> when the weather comes in, the wind and the snow and the fog and everything, then pretty much everybody just goes into their tent and just hides because there's nothing you can do outside. And even here, as I'm sitting here, the, the temperature's just dropped a couple of degrees in the last 60 seconds. So, uh, weather here is a bit of an issue. I'm going to go inside. <laughs> so obviously going to the toilet on some of the Denali is, is an issue with the cold weather and the fact that you have to keep the mountain clean. So we use these things. These actually just been uh, introduced by the National Park Service. Um, all sorts of colourful names they call these things. But anyway, what we do is we've got these little pits here that people go to the toilet in and you see people urinate into their own little hole and if you go down here then we, what we do is we just you know, toilet paper obviously and then we open this up just want to make sure it's level because it doesn't fall off which would be a bit of a nightmare and then There. And this is a little Jesus. <laughs> this, is, this is a little styrofoam seat, <laughs> which you sit on, and then you have to carry it with you off the mountain. 
because it's the only way to prevent uh, ruining the environment up here. So anyway, go away and <laughs> let me do my thing. Uh, oh, don't pan to someone cooking within four <laughs> feet, whatever you do. <laughs> no, no. Tomorrow will prove to be the most difficult part of the climb as they make their way to 14,000 foot camp, in particular for Richard. Um, it's about 8.30 in the morning and it's pretty cold outside, but um, today we're heading to uh, 14,000 foot camp, which means um, <coughs> going up Motorcycle Hill and around Windy Corner, two of the sort of most um, infamous points on the mountain. Uh, unfortunately, I have a blister <laughs> and uh, it's hurting a lot. It's, it's happened because of uh, the instep of my, my plastic mountaineering boot has been rubbing against my foot. Um, so I've got to bandage it up. Um, hopefully it'll, it won't be too bad today, but it might be a bit of an epic. Mm, nice. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's quite large. <laughs> But um, I don't know. Now, I'll let you into the secret. This is going to be a grunt day, I'll tell you. I slept quite well last night. This is going to be this is going to be the hardest day of the uh, trip for me today, getting this sled and this uh, thing up. But well, you know, got to do it. Yeah. See you later. Today is probably one of the hardest days we're going to have. Just at the bottom now of Motorcycle Hill. And even though we did a cache yesterday, it's really hard. Because we're moving up to 14,000 feet, so the altitude is beginning to affect us. And it's just hard <laughs> hauling sledges and heavy weights up, up steep hills. Sort of masochistic in some way. I hate that when you see them go over the top of the hill and you just wish you were there and you've still got ages to go yourself. Oh, last bit. Come on. Well, that's us the top of Motorcycle Hill, at least. The first section done, that took just over an hour. From here, we're gonna go up the next section to a place called Squirrel Point. And uh, it's icy, it's a lot more icy than that last bit, so uh, we're gonna be a bit more careful with our crampons and sleds. <coughs> it's fantastic up here, it's really cold. really dangerous part going up here it's very icy it's steep and if you lose your footing once and I could tumble straight down be very careful Well, we had a little break there, and we're just coming up towards Windy Corner now. It's very hot, it's half past one. We're on the go for four and a half hours. So we're in the heat of the day now. About 12 and a half thousand feet, and we're going up to 14,000 feet, so. So we've got a way to go. Just gotta push on. Step by step. Gotta 
was just thinking on the way up that I think uh, hell just froze over actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel at the moment. <laughs> Sore hips from the holding yeah. this sled that weighs I don't know how much, just pulling down on my hips and uh, blisters aren't too bad but they, the heels, it, it's just the, you get hot spots from just, you know. Friction. Yeah, friction, uh, you know, step after step after step. And there's not much you can do about it. But glad we're, to be at the top of uh, we're at Windy Corner now, which is very unwindy, <laughs> which is good. Although it's it's getting to the very the, the hottest part of the day now. It's about three, must be about three o'clock by now. So we've still got another two hours ahead of us. So it's not over by by a long shot. Well, we've come around Windy Corner and we're just coming up to the cache at 13.5. I've heard there's been a rock fall there earlier on today, and. Uh, very tired, very, very tired. But this most amazing country, it's clear as a bell today. Just the crevasses here are enormous. It's really phenomenal, absolutely incredible country. Still as anything. God, what a place to be. After nine hours of climbing, the team finally reached camp at 14,000 feet. So after a very long day, a very long day, up to here we've got the tent up, and that's what we're eating. It's a chicken with rice and everything like that. We're absolutely knackered. And, uh, sorry, I'll stay again. We're, at, <laughs> we're very, very tired. <coughs> we're hungry as well. So we're looking forward to uh, a, uh, a lay-in tomorrow morning, but it's good to be here. <laughs> Mountain house. Well, the moment has come. Nine hours of walking, um, and we're going to remove the bandage and see how my plaster is, my blister has progressed. So. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's slid. It's steaming. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's a good sign. It's like Christmas. <laughs> oh, it smells. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do this. Oh, hold on. Mm. Ah, yes, it's sore. <laughs> It's kind of all wrinkled up, as you can see. I hope you're enjoying this at home. <laughs> Two nights stay is minimum at this camp. The arrival of a storm forces the team to delay moving further, but it also affords them a rest day, allowing certain team members to think about their situation. Came to the very difficult decision today to um, stop here at 14,000 and not go any higher. Um, it was probably the hardest decision of my life. I know I'm, uh, Gavin <laughs> thinks that um, I can do it physically, I know I can do it, but I don't feel confident enough. Um, this is a serious mountain, um, and I knew that from the start. I knew that if I wanted to, I could um, call it quits here without, you know, affecting the team, um, which is what I've done. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. And um, some bad news today: uh, one of the planes that brings uh, climbers in crashed into Mount Hunter, which is kind of just behind me. Denali's there, so it's a bit of a um, sad atmosphere in, in the camp today. Um, could have been any one of us really and uh, kind of puts a lot of things into perspective but um, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I've made this decision to stay here although I'm, 
I feel sorry that I won't be with my teammates when they hopefully uh, get to the top of this mountain. The team, now down to five members, prepared to leave Camp 4 after three days. The upcoming ascent is the most demanding part of the climb, with the ascent of the head wall. I'm gonna try and get up to this little ledge and take a break. Another marker. Yeah. Hey, uh, I think we're gonna get caught. It's not moving very fast, so I think I'm gonna put my fleece on. At the top of the head wall, Camp 4 lies 2,000 feet below. From here they will climb the west buttress, a 1,000 foot ascent, and continue on to Camp 5 at 17,000 feet. Alright, we're now on top of the west buttress. <laughs> We're uh, on our way up. Stale. Been feeling good, I think. Two days at Camp 5 allows the team to prepare for the summit attempt. At long last, the team set off on their final day's climbing. We just come up to the football field. It's very, very cold, very exposed here. I'm wearing a near pre face mask to protect my face from freezing. Minus 25, maybe minus 30 with the wind. It's cold. But we're doing okay. Maybe another couple of hours to the summit. It's going good. At long last, the team approached the summit at 20,320 feet altitude. This is the top of North America. Yeah! 